This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome, everyone, to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline, and there is some breaking news for us football fans as the offseason for most has just really begun. Um, And some of us, our teams have been at home or on fishing trips for a while, (laughs) a couple weeks now. If you're a Niners fan, you know what I'm talking about, but um for some of us, the rest of you guys out there who just whose seasons may have just ended this past weekend, so there's some updated news as far as Big Ben with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So he was featured um, just this morning. So this is breaking news as of this morning, where he was doing an interview on um, <clears throat> 93.7 The Fan this morning, and it's potentially his last season this season was his last season he did not say whether or not he is actually going to for sure come back for the 2017 season um and i just wanted to give some of what he said because again so he didn't say that he's not returning this next season but at the same time he did not say that he was going to return and so this is kind of basically some bits of what he did say so i quote Um, it's just, it's one of those things. I was talking to my wife about it last night. I talked to my agent about it, coach about it. I'm going to take this off season to evaluate, to consider all options, to consider health and family and things like that. And just kind of take some time away to evaluate next season. If there's going to be a next season, all those things at that point in my career and my age, I think that it's prudent. I feel that like that's the prudent and smart thing to do every year. So, Ben, he is going to be 35 in March, so he's not really old. He still has, you know, perhaps a little bit left in him. He did say that um, he's going to do a lot of praying about it, that he's going to be discussing it a lot with his family, and like he said, with his agents, his team, um, as far as the coaches and coaching staff, because he wants to do what's best, of course, and rightfully so, for him and his family, and... So they did also ask him straight out if this was the end, like if he's just not going to come back next year. And um, he responded by saying, I'm not by any means saying that I'm not coming back or anything like that. You want to be able to leave the game walking out in a healthy spot. You don't want to be carted out. You don't want to leave the game and be worse for the wear. That's why I think it's prudent. So I guess he's really saying that his biggest concern is just his age and his body now he doesn't have any real um injuries as far as something that where he needs to end it right now um he uh he like i said he's 34 years old he's gonna be 35 in march he was set up to be making 18 mil this next season followed by 23 million in 2018 and another 23 million in 2019 they if they would have won this past weekend they would have been in the super bowl so it's not that they had a terrible season his team did fairly well um and as far as ben is concerned it shows that this this season he completed 64.4 percent of his passes he had 29 touchdowns and 13 interceptions so it's not an awful career if he were to decide to step away from it at this point i know that it would definitely break a lot of fans hearts if he did i know that he has a big strong um 
you know, fan base as far as like a strong fan base in Steelers and just as a quarterback as well. And so it's going to be quite interesting to decide and to see what is going to happen. He did also give a good shout out to his line saying injuries are always key. Head injuries are always a big thing. I feel very blessed and thankful that my line was as good as they were this year. So Perhaps there's more to the story that he just hasn't disclosed as far as how his body truly feels and what risks he's willing to continue to take. Um, we all know that there's a lot of risks, especially as a quarterback, when the main objective of the defensive side is to get you. <laughs> That's everybody's, you know, on defense especially the defensive line is to come at you and to come and get you. So he does have to deal with that. So it's going to be quite interesting. I get it when he says, you know, you don't want to be carted out. You want to leave and step away and decide when, okay, this is my time to go. I'm done. And you want to leave because you want to leave. I get that too. Um, so it's just one of those things where it's a difficult to decision either way especially when you do still have a little bit left in you and you feel probably good and you feel like you can get another season two or three out of yourself but then do you want to risk something bigger so I, I get it I get it especially as a football player and especially as someone who has had a great career such as he and has had a long career um, I get it I can see why he's interested in perhaps taking a step back but Again, that's something that hopefully he decides soon, I would assume, for most of you. Because uh, as fans, we're antsy. But then as an organization, I'm sure you're antsy too as well. As what do you do if your main guy on offense is uncertain right now? And I think it's good at least like he's being open about it. So he's giving them the opportunity to decide and make that decision, I guess, it's kind of a team effort as far as that decision is concerned but he's making it seem like it's more amongst himself and his family which he has every right to do that so that's going to cut us to our first break that was just some breaking news that just um got reported as i started this episode so i wanted to make sure you guys got that first and when we come back i'm going to give you guys an update on russell Westbrook and the record that he has just tied with the great larry bird as well as um some things other injury updates blake griffin is set to perhaps come back today against the 76ers and with that an update on ben simmons and what's going on with him as um the Sixers are kind of anticipating a perhaps comeback with him as well. And then some more on Serena, Venus, Frederer, and the Australian Open. So keep it locked here. You are listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports episode. This is episode 149. So that means Ben's going to get the big 150 tomorrow. But keep it locked here. I'm going to cut it to a quick break and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline. And today, um, so that was an update on football and what's happening um especially with big ben and the steelers over there so we're gonna definitely keep you guys updated on what happens as he decides what he's gonna do with the rest of his career but then we're gonna move now into basketball because there's been a lot of great games last night a lot of game winners actually um the warriors lost to the heat based upon um Dion waiters last second 
win push well you know basket to get that win for them so they defeated and ended the warriors seven game running streak so the heat faced off against the warriors they hosted them in miami and the warriors lost to them 102 105 so that was the game for the warriors last night but then i wanted to go on to russell westbrook and so he posted up another triple double last night in the victory that the thunder had against the utah jazz last night they defeated the jazz 97 95 thanks to a game-winning jumper from westbrook with 1.4 seconds left on the clock so another game winner there for him it and actually okay so basically he had for Russell, he had 10 rebounds, 10 assists, and 38 points. So with that, he has had his 22nd triple-double of the season. Therefore, putting him at a tie with, okay, which is, is just awesome because he is now tied with the great Larry Bird with career triple-doubles. So he's tied at number five. The number five spot with Larry Bird. They have 59 as their as that career triple doubles. Um, sitting at number one is 181 career triple doubles for Oscar Robertson. Magic Johnson, he had 138. Jason Kidd with 107. And then Wilt Chamberlain had 78. So he potentially could m tie up and meet Wilt Chamberlain, if he gets one more, he's going to um, knock off Larry Bird. So that's definitely going to happen, I, I think so. Um, but then that big one with is the single season triple double record. And Oscar Robertson, Robertson, excuse me, holds that title with 41 in a season, whereas Russell is just at 22 for this season. So he could potentially be breaking this next record with Larry Bird as well as averaging a triple double like oscar robertson as well as having um more than and moving up the ranks in single season triple double ranking so which would be really cool i'm excited to see that and speaking of russell who i said was definitely going to i know that some people especially ben like we discussed this and if you guys have listened to some of our previous episodes you guys have heard us discuss the whole fact that perhaps russell as the season wanes on will at least start dropping down as far as rebounds are concerned um because he is just a point guard and so that like, it's understandable to have all of those points and to dish out all of those assists but that the rebound category may fall short but that is definitely not the case. I'm I'm telling you, I truly believe that this man feels that he is so give, given the culture, like he's a he's the unwanted stepchild of the NBA. He does everything and works so hard and to prove himself, to prove his worth, and yet, you know, he still gets slighted. And what I'm discussing right now is moving on to the all-star game. So we talked about this last night because we all know that he did not get that starting position over Steph Curry. And I, I'll say it again, Steph Curry is the wholesome poster child of the NBA. It's not terrible. It's not, it, it works in his favor. It's not a bad thing. It's definitely working in his favor and it's getting him that popularity, especially amongst the fans that is going to get him that push and that boost into being not only an all-star but being a starter so and it's not that Steph doesn't deserve to be an all-star um but just based upon the season comparisons between him and Russ it's just one of those things where it really was a favoritism vote which I get that's what the all-star game is but I, it's kind of just stinky when fans especially are voting just because they like someone's shoes or they think he's really nice and they don't do it based upon stats and seasons but anyways so moving on to the vote so the players and the coaches had the opportunity to vote this year and that was one of the things that was different about the all-star game going into this season but so coach Kerr of the Golden State Warriors before the game against Miami last night, he did have some words in regards to the player votes. So let me give you guys some background. So only 324 players actually participated 
and the player vote and of them of those 324 roughly a hundred players had just one vote which means that 324 guys about a hundred of them voted probably just for themselves or they did something where you know i'll vote for you if you vote for me <laughs> so they didn't necessarily vote for themselves but they made sure they had at least one vote which is fine if you're not your biggest fan who's going to be rooting for you so you're always going to be you know but at the same time a player like for instance mo williams he hasn't played a second this entire season and he had a vote so he's on the ballot. He got a vote. And so um, this is what Coach Kerr had to say about this. I quote, I saw the list. I saw all the guys who got votes. There were 50 guys on there who had no business getting votes. Although a lot of people wrote in their buddies in the presidential vote as well. So maybe that's just their own way of making a statement. I think if you're going to give the players a vote, they should take it seriously. And especially because we hear all of this about players, um, being upset and thinking that it's not right that it's unfair that it's rigged yada 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 because it is just based upon solely fan vote in the past but then when they are given the opportunity to vote they kind of just some guys that voted at least a hundred of them just did it for fun and just did it as a joke and just did it to see like oh let's see what will happen um so legit legitimately only what 224 guys actually voted le and made legitimate votes if you take away the 100 guys that only voted for themselves or for mo williams um so it's really interesting to see because i don't know i guess this will go into are they gonna do this again next year or they're gonna switch up the voting again because of what happened this time are more guys gonna actually vote and take the time to vote for all stars um i don't know i don't know i wouldn't be surprised if the nba decided not to do that anymore if it was 100 like 75 percent fan vote and the other was coaches i don't know because and they're not going to take it seriously then whatever and there's always going to be somebody who feels slighted regardless and we you know that's just how it is so moving on to now some updates as far as health concern updates and injury updates so we do know that Blake Griffin he has been out he sat out for the Clippers the last 18 games so he's been out for a while since December but he is set to actually make his debut to come back tonight and so he is looking to come back tonight against the 76ers. The Clippers are facing up against the Philadelphia 76ers. He did have, again, that knee surgery a couple weeks ago, which honestly, if I'm the Clippers, I'd be happy to hear it because they are also without Chris Paul. So he just had surgery on his thumb last Wednesday. So he's going to be out for at least six to eight weeks so they're without that point guard but Austin Rivers he did step it up especially if you watch last evening's game he did play very well for his squad but then as a whole without both Blake and uh Chris Paul the team is only three and seven without them so definitely something that they are going to really want um Blake to be able to transition back into the game back into his flow because that's definitely going to help the team he did have his full practice like he had a full contact practice on Friday which is really good um he was showing good signs he sounds really optimistic about this evening everybody really sounds optimistic about this evening for him um so I'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to 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 transition now that he's had some time off it wasn't really time off he was recovering but i'm just really interested to see how he's going to fit back into that flow and then because we are discussing the 76ers their big guy that they have been anticipating a come not a, it's not a comeback but really a debut actually is ben simmons and he did have his plan scan in new york and his recovery is going well it doesn't look like there's any setbacks there's still however no timetable for when he will return so everything is still basically going according to plan but 
the plan for him to make that comeback is not in rotation right now. It's not really the biggest thing there. So we will see and keep you guys, of course, updated on Ben Simmons and see if this season is even if he's going to, you know, get some tick this season. So we'll see. And with that, I am going to cut it to our final break. But when we come back, we have to get into the Australian Open and I'll give you guys a recap and updates on what's going on over there as well. So keep it locked here. You are listening to the Golden State Media Concepts sports podcast i almost said tennis podcast (laughs) but we're going to discuss tennis when we come back so keep it locked here you're listening to the golden state media concept sports podcast i'll be right back check out the show that's built on the mma from the ufc to extreme cage fighting they got the fights covered check out the gsmc mma podcast get the latest news on past or upcoming fights join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the mma past present and future when it's the fight game there's just one show to check out gsmcpodcast.com backslash mma dash podcast don't forget to like them on facebook and follow them on twitter visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back, everyone, to the Golden State Media Concept Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline. And before we wrap up this basketball segment of the podcast, I wanted to give you guys an update. I know I was speaking on Ben Simmons of the 76ers right before the break, but I don't want to leave out a huge rookie impact player that we've been discussing and have been really impressed with, Joel Embiid. So he is actually going to miss out on the next, at least the next two games. So they are hosting the LA Clippers tonight and we just discussed that Blake is probably hopefully in the works making a comeback tonight in a debut against the Sixers but unfortunately so Ibid he did have um, a left knee contusion on Friday when the 76ers defeated the Portland Trailblazers and so he is actually set out to miss the game tonight I guess the Clips And then as well as tomorrow when they take on the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's definitely going to change the play, the play of game, the style of game for the 76ers because Joel has been such an impact and key player for them, especially these past weeks, but all season really since he's been back. And so I'm really looking, I'm, I'm, interested i'm cautious i'm nervous for the 76ers (laughs) as well um especially when blake now it could go one of two ways it could be that blake is going to be pushing it too soon and he's not going to do as well as anticipated or blake is really ready to go because if you listen to any of the interviews that blake has been having or any of the conversations he's been having these last few weeks he's itching to get back on the court he really he feels in his mind he is ready to go and that he feels that his body is healthy so that's going to be a huge loss to have um joel sitting out against the game with the clippers this evening so it does look like jail um jalil okafor is going to be making that transition to um replace joel tonight so we'll see how that goes we will definitely ben will be back tomorrow to make sure to give you guys an update on that and how that goes for the game this evening and then i wanted to update you guys so yesterday we discussed how on saturday the lakers suffered that terrible terrible heartbreaking 49 point loss i mean well unless you're a king's fan it's a heart it's a joyful heart loss a joyful loss (laughs) <laughs> your heart is joyful for that loss with the lakers but remember how we were discussing that potentially is kobe does he care does he not care is his heart hurting or is he just really focused on life after retirement but actually he did reveal that um so he had a conversation with on friday actually so this is actually something that was discussed before that loss on Sunday so I'm sure they're definitely gonna have to take him up on his offer so he was with um ESPN radio on Friday and he did say that he is actually willing 
to be of some help in that. Um, and I quote, it says now being front and center about it. That's not something that is really my cup of tea. I'd rather be behind the scenes and focus on the content I'm creating because that's where my passion truly lies. But the bus family knows that I'm always a phone call away. So he's definitely saying that he is available, that he's willing to kind of give some advice to help them in any, you know, way possible as far as the back end of it now the lakers are still just 16 and 32 um it is luke walton's first year coaching them but you know i'm glad and this has to be encouraging for luke as well because bryant did say um quote i think luke is doing a fine job it's tough because you have to teach players how to play within a structure and so in finding um end quote so finding that new structure for the lakers without kobe with a new coach with a lot of these young guys that are very very talented but just young right now and i mean the lakers haven't won more than 27 games in a single season since the 2012-2013 season so it's been a while for them i feel bad for you laker fans in a way um but <laughs> at the same time i can't say that i'm feel too too bad for you guys but moving on to now tennis so i wanted to give you guys an update on what's happening with the australian open because i know that some of us are not able to watch a lot of it or you have to wait until you see the replays of it later when it's at an easier time to watch just due to the fact of the time difference and when a lot of these international games are played so i wanted to give you guys a quick update on what's happening over there so first off now Roger Federer, Federer, he is in the semifinals. Um, he's going to be face off against Stan Wawrinka of Switzerland. Now, it looks like, and people are calling this really his comeback because truly he did have to take a six-month layoff because of a knee injury. So he's he's 35. He had to deal with that knee injury. A lot of people were kind of, I don't know, apprehensive. We'll say apprehensive with um, this Australian Open. And so this is actually Roger Federer's 13th Australian Open semi in the last 14 years. So he did win over Misha. It looks like 61, 75, 62. So it's going to be now he's going to go against Stan Wawrinka and they are facing up in the semifinal. And I just wanted to share this little piece from Stan, actually, because, you know, he, Roger Federer is one of the best, if not the greatest. And I thought that this was kind of cla the most classiest piece of trash talk ever, um, especially right now as um, we're looking towards the semifinals of the Australian Open. So this is what he had to say against his matchup with Roger Federer. So for sure now, I'm more confident with myself. When I step on the court, doesn't matter who I play. I know what I have to do if I want to win. Against Roger, it's always special because he's so good. He's the best player of all time. He has answer for everything. But... I managed to beat him in a grand slam. So we'll see. So, <laughs> end quote. So, like I said, classy trash talk. Because, you know, he's giving props where props are due. As far as who his opponent is. But at the same time, he's like, look, I'm still, I already know what I need to do to win. And I've beat him before. So, yeah, he's great. And he's one of the best players of all time. However, look at my resume. So, I'm very interested to see that matchup as well as the latest matchup. So now on the women's side, now history is being made by the Williams sisters just so ever so effortlessly. <laughs> so Venus Williams actually has become the oldest Australian Open semifinalist in Open Era history. So she defeated the 24th seeded, excuse me, um, the 24th seated Anastasia last night in her victory and so actually not last night today because today is Tuesday excuse me I got a little bit tripped up with the time difference but um now this Venus Williams is actually just 36 years old but like I said she is the oldest in this time and so it's really interesting to see how she's going to do as she has reached the semifinals. she did come in to 
the Australian Open nursing and arm injury. So she isn't really in full form. <laughs> she had to deal with that injury. So it's going to be interesting to see how she plays and how well she does moving forward in this Australian Open. So that's actually going to do it for this episode of the podcast. I'm your host, Pauline. Ben is going to be back in here tomorrow morning to give you guys a recap of all things sports and what happens today in the world of sports. So keep it locked here. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This has been the Golden State Media Concept Sports Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be.